Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. Today's card is a slider card. You can see here it is half pulled out and full pulled out. So let me show you how this works. Here is the front of the card. And when I open it up, you can see that there's nothing visible and you follow the instructions. I always try to include instructions. And when you pull it out, you get a nice long slider with a bear holding a heart. I made this card with several Ellen Hudson products. The first is All Inside, and this has some matching dies, so I'm gonna use those, and also this set of envelope sliders. I'm gonna start by stamping my bear with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto some Nina Solar White cardstock. I'm gonna color him with Copic markers. I'm gonna be using W1, W3, and W5. I'm starting off with the W5, it's just a warm gray color. It's the darkest that I have, and I'm just doing the left side of him. Now I'm slowing it down here to show the W3, the middle. I kind of start out and move to the edge and go back and forth. And I color all the way to the edge to make sure I get a nice blend between those two colors. And I kind of hover a little bit longer on the edge of the W5 color just to make sure I don't get any excess lines or anything like that. So uh, with my medium color is uh, when I go over the right side of the bear. Um, and now I've got my W1, the lightest color, and you can see I'm using that same technique. And this is really helpful when you have large areas. So I start on the right and you can see I kind of cover that line a little bit longer. I um, stay there just to make sure that it's blended really well. And I go all the way around where the colors meet and then I just finish off the center area. And that's just an easy way to get a big area covered. I also needed to stamp that heart. I forgot to do that. That's also part of the all inside set. And I'm gonna quickly color this heart with a few colors of red. I've got a dark R29, and then I go around with the R24 and finish off with actually a pink, which is RV14. And then it's better to let this dry before you do this uh, little added step here of a reflection with the zero colorless blender. And that's just gonna remove some of the color. I'm gonna hold it up here so you can see it a little bit better. So anyway, that is my heart, and now I'm ready to die cut these with the coordinating set. The heart is really easy to do because you can see through it. The bear is not so easy because it's a solid die, and it's really hard when you put it over your image to see exactly where you're cutting. So I'm gonna create a template out of some scratch paper, and I'll get rid of the inside and use the negative, and I'm gonna position it exactly where I want it to be die cut, and then I can use some surgical tape to hold it in place. I'm gonna also flip it over just to make sure I really don't have any movement of these two pieces of cardstock. And then I'll take the die and I'll position it right there in the groove. And you can kind of feel it kind of snap into place there. And then you'll just take that over to your Big Shot, run it through, and uh, it'll come out perfectly. So I need a little paper piercer here to remove my die cut. I'm gonna hold it up for you so you could see that it's a nice even edge because I was able to see exactly where I was cutting. And I'm gonna store this template in my die set and that way I can reuse it over and over. I'm gonna use this medium heart in the set to create the pull for the slider. And this one is gonna be colored a little bit lighter than the one I did earlier, which is what the one that the bear is holding. This one's gonna be the pull tab. So I'm using RV14, 13, and 10. They're just pink colors. And uh, I'm gonna use that same zero to create that reflection on the right-hand side. I don't have a very good pull stamp, so I'm gonna write the word pull. Now, when I'm using my own handwriting, I find that it's best if I don't try to write in my own handwriting, and also if I vary the letters a little bit, so I have some lowercase, some uppercase, and I have some higher, some lower, and just less like you wrote it yourself. Next, I'm gonna die cut my envelope. This set comes with two different ones. I'm gonna be using the larger one. It actually has a slit that it cuts in the middle. I'll show you here, I'm gonna run this through my big shot. You can see the slit right there. And then I've also got score lines on all four sides. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the top off because I don't need the top and it's gonna kinda of hang off too much. I want as much space as possible at the top. So I'm just gonna eliminate that. And then I'm gonna fold over the outside pieces, the left and right pieces along the score lines and use a bone folder, make sure I get a nice crisp fold. When it comes to the side with the slit, it's a little trickier. And I watched Julie Ebersol, who created this die set, uh, use this technique to make it easier. And what you do is you hold your ruler against the score line and you use the roll ruler to hold down the back of the envelope so that you don't have any issues with uh, the creasing 
over that hole. And you'll see what I mean if you have this set. It's a little harder to score on that line with that hole there, but using a ruler really helps a lot. So this slit is where the slider is going to go up and down. My slider is four and three quarter by one and three eighths inches, and I cut this to fit an A2 size card. Um, and it fits perfectly within this slot. So now I'm gonna start decorating my slider. I've got my bear and my pull tab and my heart. The first thing I need to do is put the heart inside the arms of this bear. And the die cut actually cuts the arms of the bear, which is so cute. I'm gonna put some multi-medium mat um, on the back so that if I do get some glue that shows, it won't be shiny, it'll be matte, so it really won't be noticeable. I just slip it right there in between his arms and then press down. I'm also using this same glue for my pull tab. I'm just putting a little bit there at the top and putting the heart kind of half on, half off the paper. I do have a fine tip applicator on this uh, bottle of glue and that really helps me be exact with my application. I'm using this UR set by Altenew. I use this set all the time, it has some great sayings. And I'm gonna put the UR part of the sentiment at the top and the awesome at the bottom. So to do that, I need to ink up just part of the sentiment. So I covered the part I didn't want inked up with some surgical tape. I use two layers to make sure that it doesn't soak through to the stamp. And so for the top one, I'm just gonna put it right there underneath the heart. And then I'll go ahead and add my bear underneath that. And again, I'm using my uh, multi matte medium and I'm making sure that I go all the way to the very edge with this bear because it's gonna go up and down that slit and I don't want it to get caught in any way on any part of the bear. So uh, I was actually using my tweezers and found that it was much easier to just use my fingers. So I put them right there under the UR and then I'm gonna create a little ground for this bear using the W1, it's just a little dab here and there of the, of the marker. And then I'd use that same technique covering up the first part of the sentiment so that I can stamp the second part awesome underneath the bear. Now I'm gonna need a stopper so that it doesn't fly out of the card when someone pulls it. So I have a quarter of an inch a uh, piece of cardstock that I've cut. I'm gonna position my slider so I know where to put this stopper. I want it to stop at the bottom of the envelope. So I wanna make sure that you can see the awesome in full while the envelope is closed. And then I'll just mark the bottom with a pencil just cause it's easier to do it that way. I'll take my slider out. I'm gonna put some glue on the bottom, just a nice long strip right there. And then I'm gonna put that, that stopper right underneath my pencil line and press down. Now I'll take the slider and put it through my envelope to make sure that my stopper is in the right location, and it is. So I'm gonna trim off, because I really don't need much, maybe like three eighths of an inch on each side. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and cut off the excess of the stopper. And then I can also cut off that bottom, because that's just excess and it's gonna take up more space uh, on the center of my card, so I'm gonna cut that off as well. You know I don't use pattern paper very much. When I do, I like to use tone on tone or very simple one color sheets of cardstock. And I have a couple of these Lawn Fawn Let's Polka sets and I really love them a lot. The colors are great, the patterns are nice, they're not too complicated and they're really easy to incorporate into a card. So I'm gonna take the polka dot green one and I wanna show you how this is gonna to fit together. So I have my black Hero Arts note card, A2 size. I've cut a piece of Nina cardstock, about a 16th of an inch mat on all sides. And then my green cardstock is gonna fit directly on top of the Nina without any mat. So that's how all these background pieces fit together. I wanted to cut a curve with my polka dot, but I want it to be even. So how I normally do this is I measure the same distance on both sides. In this case, it's three and three quarter inches. I'm gonna take my curved die from the Avriel Custom Panel Set. I'm just gonna center it on those two pencil lines and that'll make sure that I get a nice even curve from side to side. Once I get it positioned, I'll hold it into place with some surgical tape and run it through the Big Shot machine. So when I come back, you can see I get a nice pretty curve. I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere this to my Nina cardstock because I'm gonna to need to cut the slit into both of these pieces of cardstock. So the slider will be behind the Nina. In order to figure out where I need to cut the slit, I need to put my adhesive, my Scotch foam tape at the bottom so I know how much space this is gonna take up. So I wanna use the minimum amount. I'm just gonna cut this in half so it's about a quarter of an inch each piece and put one at the top and one at the bottom. And I'll go ahead and put the sides on just while I'm here and I'm just gonna use a full strip for that. 
So what I'm going to do is I need to mark where that scotch foam tape is. So I'm going to hold it up to the light and make a pencil mark because I'll be able to see through it and know exactly where that scotch foam tape ends. So that's what I did off camera. You can see my pencil line and it lines up right at the top of this scotch foam tape. And that's the furthest down my slider is going to be able to go because the adhesive will be in the way. So I'm going to put my stopper right on top of that pencil mark and move my envelope up so I know exactly where to position it. And once I get it to where I think it needs to be, I'm gonna close it up and make sure that none of my sentiment shows. I needed to scoot it up just a little bit more. And so once I have it laid out, I'm gonna hold it with my left finger, open it up, and then I'm gonna hold it and slide out the slider, but keep that envelope in place. And this is pretty easy to do. And then what I'll do is take a pencil and mark the slider, the hole right there, the slit. And that's what I'm gonna be cutting out of both the polka dot and the Nina. I find the easiest way to do this is to take an X-Acto knife and a craft mat and just cut the slit with a ruler. So really press the ruler down hard so it doesn't move and just take your X-Acto knife and just run it a few times. I am cutting two pieces of cardstock here so I'm gonna have to do it a few times. And then just the edges, I just go up and down on the edges until those pieces of cardstock pop out. And you can always adjust and make it bigger if you need to. All right, so for adhering the envelope, it's important to make sure that you hit all edges of the envelope. You don't want it popping up. And especially the part under the slit, and that's what's gonna keep it from kind of pulling up when the slider comes up. So that's important to do. Make sure you get some glue under there. And using the fine tip applicator definitely helps with that small area. Next, I wanna finish gluing this envelope. So I'm gonna position my slider in there. Now you could glue the envelope without the slider in there and just put it in afterwards. But when I did that, I found that my slider didn't move very well in and out of this envelope because it was too tight. So by putting the slider in there before you glue the flaps of the envelope down, it kind of allows for enough room, it's loose enough for the slider to move up and down much easier. So that's a little tip for you. Put your slider in before you glue the flaps of your envelope down. To make sure the slider doesn't move side to side when it's being pulled out, I need to create a little runway. So I'm gonna take some scotch foam tape, I'll cut it in half because I need a thin piece, and I'm gonna position it on the outside of the stopper, that 3 8 inch stopper that comes out, and that should give that stopper enough room to go all the way up to the top of the envelope. And then I had some extra space at the top here, and so decided to just put a little bit more scotch foam tape. Now I'm gonna peel off the backing of all this tape and put it onto my Hero Arts note card, which is white on the inside. I'm just gonna center it there. And you can see I've got this big space in the middle. I'm gonna fill that up with a sentiment. But first let me show you and make sure this works. I'm gonna pull it up and I can see everything in my stopper is stopping at the edge of that slit there. So I'm gonna take some black cardstock and this sentiment comes with the all inside set, the same set as the bear. Sprinkle it with some white embossing powder. And then I did this three times and finally decided to grab my Misty. For some reason, my inside stamp wasn't stamping straight. I think because the edge of the cut stamp was a little off and so that was kind of giving me some problems. Anyway, so once I have that heat embossed as well, I'm gonna Put it, in the, put it on the card and mark the sides with a pencil and I'll trim those off and add some scotch foam tape again and put it right there across the middle. I definitely needed something below that envelope because it's just too much space and I wanted to put it as high as possible so that I would have the longest slider possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and you can see everything. And then I'm gonna also put it back in so you can see how easily it goes back in and you wanna make sure that everything is glued down securely to your slider so that it doesn't get caught on the envelope on the way out or the way in. So that is the card for today. I don't think it's really that hard and these envelope sliders are really cute. They make it easy with the slit in the back. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.